Hello and welcome to another Giant Slayer TFT Top 5 Countdown video. My name is Till Truth, and today we'll be taking a look at the current Top 5 compositions for Patch 12.9. The newest TFT patch changed a lot of the meta, or did it? Well, it did, but a lot of the compositions we saw doing well in the previous patch are actually still doing well now. The main reason is that the new egg mechanic gives everyone a free tome of traits, meaning it's much easier to chase certain synergies like innovators, mutants, or strikers. That said, there are definitely new compositions flying around. Plus, re-rolling has returned. There's also been a major shift away from AP boards, but we'll get into why that is soon. For now, let's go ahead and get started. But before we begin, don't forget to click the links in our description. Give your support to everyone who helped make this video possible. We host many TFT shows and tournaments with plenty of exciting content to come, so be sure to also follow our Giant Slayer TFT social medias. All right, let's get back to the video. Kicking off our top five, we have Enchanters coming in at number five. Just calling a composition, quote, enchanters is a bit vague, but the reason is that enchanter boards have a lot of flexibility. Before we get into what an enchanter board is, let's first discuss the 12.9 patch. That patch brought in a ton of changes, but there are a few highly impactful adjustments. First off, the new egg system means players get a free tome of traits, which helps a lot with forcing certain synergies. Second, enchanters get buffed, and that's true even after the redemption bug fix. Third, Oriana is crazy as they lowered her max mana by 50 and increased her damage and shields. Lastly, they nerfed the heck out of Morellos to the point that most players aren't even building it anymore. What all that means is enchanters are even better than before is the splash trait and can be used as the main synergy for a composition. That is leading to an interesting rock, paper, scissors theme in the meta because enchanters absolutely body and the AP boards. So in a lobby with a bunch of AP compositions, then the other players just need to go heavier into enchanters and it's an easy dub for them. But against the enchanter boards, AD boards do really well. So we've seen a lot of AD compositions that maybe shouldn't be doing as well and have begun to thrive. Point is, enchanters are good, but we caution against playing them when the lobby is AD because it can be difficult to survive against these boards. As for what to play when using enchanters, there's roughly three paths to go. Morgana slash Senna, Lulu Redemption, or Oriana. Of course, any enchanter board is likely to use most of the enchanters. It's mainly the approach towards how you're building the board and who the carry is that changes. Senna and Morgana are the three cost reroll version for enchanters that is playable, but certainly more niche than the other variations. Senna did receive decent buffs, so playing her as a carry is viable once again. Morgana hasn't really been buffed besides the enchanter synergy itself, but she does provide a frontline. This variation can also lean into other builds like Socialite Flex, where you're using enchanters as utility to keep a specific carry like Aurelia alive. A more common variation for enchanters is Lulu Redemption, though we should point out that stacking redemption was just hotfix. Previously, the damage reduction of redemption was stacking when it shouldn't. That said, having one or two redemptions on Lulu is still quite good because the item heals for a lot on an enchanter. The basic build in this case is Lulu with Morgana and Vex frontline. Oriana and Ari as damage in the backline and Senna for additional damage on the socialite hex. Finally, Oriana. Oriana can be played in every single composition and doesn't have to be the main carry at all. Specifically for enchanters, the idea is to give Oriana items like Sojin, Gunblade, and Magic Damage, and she'll keep your board alive a long, long time. When four more enchanters are active, basically play what you want with Oriana. All in all, it's difficult to pin down a specific way to play enchanters because they can just be used as a splash trait. Again, we want to reiterate, they will struggle against AD heavy lobby, so don't overcommit to enchanter trait in these types of games. All right, well that was a long discussion about the new patch and enchanters. Let's reel it back with a simpler composition that comes in at number four, Ash slash Syndicate. Ash reroll is not a new composition by any means, but it's been out of the meta for some time. Interesting enough, they nerfed Syndicate in 12.9, so you may be thinking, why is this composition viable? There's two reasons. First, the new egg and free tome means hitting four sniper or seven Syndicate is a lot easier to do. Second, Renata took a major hit in the meta with the nerf to Morello's. Renata being out of the meta, at least for now, means a lot of fringe AD carries are viable with Ash being one of them. Ash reroll is relatively simple as most reroll boards are, since the goal is to hit Ash 3 and toss a bunch of syndicate units and a few snipers. It's also fine to look for Darius 3 and Zyra 3, but Ash 3 is really all that is needed. Ash does need Infinity Edge and Last Whisper to not get stuck on enemy frontliners, but it's generally not too difficult to procure these items. The strength of this composition comes from the added survivability from Syndicate and Ash being able to sit back and dish out a lot of damage. In addition to that, she's relatively good at countering other AD boards because her ability applies an attack speed debuff. Overall, Ash Syndicate is one of the few reroll compositions in the meta. It can struggle in the mid game before Ash 3, but once you hit some upgrades, it stabilizes well and has a decent scaling into the late game. 
there's a possibility that Renata makes a return if the meta players figure out a way to utilize her effectively. If that happens, Ash reroll may end up falling out of the top kit positions, but only time will tell. Once again returning to the top 5, we have Mutants coming in at number 3. Mutant is one of those synergies that really benefits from the free Tome of Traits since it's common to use a mutant emblem depending on the mutation. Arcarius, Synaptic, Bioleaching, and Cybernetic are all still viable, though keep in mind if you're playing a heavy AP board, Enchanters will become a problem. Because Enchanters are so good against AP, that is the main reason why Mutant is only number 3 on our list. Kai'Sa can still wreck the late game, but her missiles will do a lot less damage when you're up against our 4 or 5 Enchanter board. Malzahar's Magic Tread does help with Synaptic, but it's a struggle for units like Arya or Victor to do enough damage to break through the heals and shields of Enchanters. Kha'Zix, on the other hand, is doing well unless he runs into Scholar or Innovator board with some type of CC immunity. Kha'Zix gets wrecked by units like Zillion and Syndra, both of which are relatively common in the current meta. That said, Kha'Zix with three items and a useful mutation is still the only viable assassin in the meta and does a lot of work in the mid game. Before we move on, let's talk about the elephants in the room, Colossus. Now that Colossus units are bad, including Cho'Gath, but we've yet to see multiple Colossus boards do well. Theoretically, the mutant synergy would do well with Colossus units depending on the mutation. So there's a world where playing all three Colossus together with a mutant, the new Colossus trait buff is actually doable. That said, it's not probably viable, but is worth keeping note in case of some crazy mutant Colossus builds show up in the meta. Well, well, well. Look what composition has found its way into the top five once again to claim the number two spot on the list. That's right, Strikers are somehow, some way, still viable. First off, yes, Sivir was nerfed a decent amount. What that means is Sivir is the only damage dealer and is unlikely to do well. Luckily for Sivir, that's where Aurelia comes in. Aurelia was buffed in 12.9, making her almost more of the carry than Sivir. Makes in the fact it's easier to play Strikers because of the free Tome of Traits and Enchanters being common boards means Strikers are sitting pretty near the top of the meta. The idea behind the composition is unchanged as you want to hit six Strikers with Sivir and Aurelia as your main sources of damage. Sivir ideally wants Rageblade, Infinity Edge, and Last Whisper. Well, Aurelia items can be a bit more of a mix. Infinity Edge is also good on Aurelia, but extra survivability is also needed with items like Bloodthirster, Edge of Night, and Quicksilver. Aurelia can also be used as a Zeke's Holder, which is an essential utility item to help Sivir ramp up in a fight. Or you can just go all out on damage with Aurelia and make Sivir the utility item holder. It's important to play this composition when you get a Striker Emblem because it's much less effective with only 4 Strikers. An increased AD from 6 Strikers is necessary to help Sivir be relevant in fights. Otherwise, you're basically playing with half a carry. There are always nuances, but in general, we recommend playing Strikers when you can play 6 of the trait. At the end of the day, not much has changed for this composition. Most players already know how to play Strikers with Sivir and Aurelia, so you'll go out there and enjoy the free LB. And finally, we have the number 1 composition at 12.9, Innovator Flex. This shouldn't come as much of a shock to anyone paying much attention to the current meta. As it turns out, Innovator Trait has some really good champions to build a board with and several of the potential flex carries are doing quite well in the meta. There's a lot of facets to this board we need to cover, Innovator Flex is really flexible. Let's try to break this down into the adjustable bits of information. The Innovator Trait has a few key champions that make such a good flex strategy. Zillion, Echo, Seraphine, and Jace are important innovators with the first three being the primary reason this synergy can be used in multiple ways. Zillion means Clockwork, and Clockwork got a lot better with the Oriana buffs as well as the potential to play for Clockwork consistently thanks to the free tone. Clockwork also means Jin, which brings in Sniper and Zeri. Seraphine also provides Social Light, which opens the door for Social Light carry champions like Aurelia. Echo, of course, means Scrap, which can either Jinx or Aurelia as the carry. As you can see, just three champions provide the foundation for a ton of variations. There are a lot of potential carries, which we mentioned, but to list them out, there is Jin, Draven, Zeri, Jinx, Aurelia, Jace, and even Oriana or Seraphine can carry. Each of these champions has a slightly different board. Knowing when to play one champion over another may be difficult, but the easiest way is to play off of what you hit at level 7 and what your traits your tome gives you. Clockwork Emblem? That can be used to play 4 Clockwork, which can be Jin, Oriana, or Draven as a carry. Hit an Innovator Emblem? Time to aim for that big ol' 7-piece Innovator Dragon. Scrap Emblem? Aurelia or Jinx? Socialite? Aurelia? Keep it simple, and putting together a cohesive board will be pretty easy. Honestly, we could have broken Innovator Flex into multiple compositions that would have been a bit boring. It's a bit condensed in one spot, but there are plenty of other viable compositions to play that we wanted to highlight. Though at the end of the day, you can literally play every single game using Innovator Flex and have a different board each time. Alright, that wraps up our top 5 compositions for patch 12.9. But before you go, we already know we have a few honorable mentions to talk about. 
Flying in at our first honorable mention, we have Time Flies. This is a zillion reroll composition pioneered by the streamer Robin Songs. It's composition that can do well, especially given the buffs to Zillion, Oriana, and Scholars. The main problem is, being so AP heavy, it struggles against enchanters. There's also some reliability issues with the nerfs to Zillion stun duration as the flying part of Time Flies sometimes is out of sync. Still, it's a really fun reroll composition that can definitely top four, so we recommend giving it a try. Our other honorable mention this week is Arcanus. Arcanists aren't necessarily doing poorly in the meta again, as we mentioned. Enchanters basically hard counter any AP board. The saving grace is that the free Tome of Traits makes hitting vertical Arcanists a lot easier and it opens up some options on the board. Victor is still quite strong in the light game, so it's not completely doomed for Arcanists overall. Just don't expect to do too well if most of the lobby ends up countering you with a lot of Enchanters. Well, that's all for today, folks. Overall, the meta is in a surprisingly good spot considering how much was changed in the 12.9 patch. The only downside is that AP boards on struggle bus, but the meta may just need a little time to settle. For example, Renata may make a return of players figure out an effective way to use her without Morellos. Meta aside, this patch is meant to be fun, so don't sweat your LP gains or losses too much and enjoy one of the last patches for set 6. Let us know in the comment section below what your favorite composition is. Thank you for watching, and if you're enjoying our content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future Giant Slayer TFT videos.